North Korea is in the news again. We begin with North Korea. North Korea launching another ICBM. North Korea's latest missile test is raising new concerns. Boy, does the news love it when North Korea makes any kind of threat at all because it's probably some of the best ratings they get on anything these days. Recently, Trump vowed fire and fury and Kim Jong-un's regime responded immediately with a possible attack on Guam. North Korea's military is, quote, examining the operational plans to strike around Guam. But did you know that China's military is also in South Korea at the moment, testing its missiles? Okay, so let's start here. What are we normal civilians supposed to think when countries launch their missiles for testing? Is it okay for China or the US to test their missiles in order to make sure they're working properly or just for practice, but not North Korea? I mean, I understand and you can't believe anything the Kim Jong-un regime says. But you can't believe anything the Trump administration says either. We already know they're proven liars. The whole shooting off missiles and seeing a video of it on the internet, a missile flying over the ocean in whatever direction, is that supposed to make us feel safe when it's our country doing it or it's one of our allied countries launching that missile? And are we supposed to feel threatened when it's not one of the countries that we get along with? Or shouldn't we just feel the same whenever we see a video of a missile flying through the air? I mean, if you really stop and think about it, how is it okay for one country to do something and then another country do that same exact thing, but it's not okay for them? Like that just doesn't make sense to me. Steph and I both lived in South Korea for over six years. And in that time, North Korea must have threatened South Korea or the United States at least 20 times. And how many times since 2009 did war break out with North Korea? Why are any of us to think that this time now is any different? On a scale of one to 10, how worried are you that war is gonna break out with North Korea? Four. And it wouldn't even be that high if we didn't have the current president that we have. Hang on, you have a bug on your, okay. <laughs> because North Korea isn't going to attack unless they are attacked first or provoked. I have to agree with Steph here. Pyongyang, which is the capital of North Korea, is where Kim Jong-un and his regime and all the rich and elite people associated with his regime live. Very cushy life up there for the elites and for high-end government officials. They don't wanna lose that type of lifestyle. Those guys, and it's mostly all men, are very, very aware of what happened recently in history when war broke out in the Middle East. If you look at countries like Iraq and Libya, who had leaders named Saddam Hussein and Muammar Gaddafi, it didn't end well there once war broke out. Those men were killed. Kim Jong-un and all of those guys right at the top there in government know about this. They are super aware of what could happen if war breaks out at all. They don't want war to break out. They never want war to break out because then they are going to lose the positions that they have right now, the cushy lifestyle that they lead. I mean, if you really think about it, it must be difficult to imagine what it's like in North Korea. If you're one of those people that haven't traveled to Asia, spent a lot of time in Asia, but most people haven't been to North Korea. They've just only recently opened it up to travel, but then you still don't even get to meet any of the highest people in power there anyways, and they're the ones that are hiding out, and they're the ones that don't want to lose what they have. And the only way that they're really gonna lose it is by war coming from outside of North Korea. I mean, let's take this a step further. Think about Kim Jong-un, for instance. He is friends with Dennis Rodman, who recently went back to North Korea in June 2017 to visit and hang out with Kim Jong-un. Kim Jong-un loves this type of shit, getting to invite and hang out with former NBA stars in his own country. I mean, do you really think he wants to give up this type of power just for a little pissing contest with another leader of the world who also likes to lie. I know these are hard words, but all these men have to continue to do is keep up the lies and the threats and nothing else is ever going to happen and they get to keep their power. Of course, the United States and any of its allies are not going to attack first. Seoul is geographically located 29 miles or about 40 kilometers from the DMZ, the North Korean border. North Korea, if they were attacking first, would pummel Seoul, millions of people would die. If the United States and its allies attack first, North Korea would hit Seoul and millions of people would die. So 
whoever attacks first, millions of people are dying in South Korea. Now this is the part that we forget about because news agencies reporting are saying that they're gonna threaten the United States. And if war broke out, South Korea would be the first one to go. I first moved to South Korea in 2002 when I became an English teacher and I lived there for a year. I really knew nothing about the history of Korea and had very little familiarity with Asia in general. That year in 2002 is when I first learned that there would never be a major attack started by North Korea first. Empty threat after empty threat gets tiring over time. It gets super tiring, y'all. Most people in South Korea know this, and anyone who's looked into it carefully knows this as well. What's happened in the last couple days are just more empty threats. But what surprises me the most is that people keep falling for them. And all this happening while there's a giant inflatable Trump chicken on the South Lawn of the White House too. 